Okay. So, Chad, we got a chance to try out Temtem on Sunday with their um, private beta, correct? Yes. Okay. And uh, so we figured that we would sit down and talk about kind of right before it comes out, actually, what we uh, thought of it, um, whether or not we're intending to buy it, and whether or not it can take on the uh, powerhouse that is Pokemon. So um, I think, first of all, let's start talking about what we enjoyed, and let's get into the combat, the meat and potatoes of it. Chad, what are, what are some of your favorite things about the combat? Or notes hey, on the combat? combat was, uh, combat was great. Uh -huh. um, granted, it was a stress test, so there's a lot of stuff that was uh, lagging with it, but that all aside, the combat was great. It was pretty smooth when it worked. And um, I enjoyed how they took away the crit chances and made it... Mm -hmm basically skill based where if you use your supporting characters mm -hmm. to their fullest you can apply debuffs and buffs to your main characters and uh win that way or if you just use uh their hard counters that would also work but um it gave a little bit more of a strategy to the game where you can rely on something to work all the time i agree i agree i like that a lot um another thing uh i really enjoyed and similar to pokemon is uh, they kept or are also using elemental typing um, that plays a huge role in whether or not uh, when you're fighting with someone, whether or not your, uh, your attacks are going to deal more or less damage based on your opponent's typing. I will say I found it pretty difficult to figure out what my enemy, like the Temtems that I didn't know, I found it hard yeah. for me to be able to tell what typing they were. That was my one complaint. Maybe they'll add more of a, uh, a UI for that in mm -hmm. the final version, but it was pretty difficult uh, not knowing the Temtem, uh, knowing which element was which. So there are some ones that flew, mm -hmm. but they weren't flying type. They're, they might be like grass type or something. But, yeah. Uh, yeah. Yeah. After doing some research, um, there are like the typing seem very similar to Pokemon in terms of like. These are the ones you're weak against, these are the ones you're strong against. And uh, I think they fell into a bit of a hole in terms of trying to separate their typings from Pokemon's typings while still like making recognizable looking characters. So I would often find that like uh, the Temtem that I had or I chose weren't the exact typing I thought they were. Um, like the the starter that you went with which i believe is um you went with smazzy right yeah the fire one yeah yeah i went with that one he seemed to be pretty underpowered at the beginning there uh maybe because we we're by like a water port town to start mm -hmm. off with a lot of them were either water types or, or grass flying types yeah yeah or grass well no look, there are a few grass types but those yeah, it was mostly wild ones in the grass. water where we got to. Because we we just started the game and we're very early into it. And you do face a lot of water types and wind types. The wind types especially are strong against melee. If I if I am to believe this chart I found. I also, uh, I used Crystal, I believe is how you pronounce it. Um, who looked a lot like Turtwig. Uh, it looked like they were Turtwig and Chimchar, in my opinion. Um, which are from Gen 4, I think. But my favorite Gen also one of my favorites but i will say they are super they were super cute um they were different enough that i wasn't bothered by it uh and then the and final typing with, uh, you got was weird they didn't do what pokemon started doing which i didn't like was that they kept their um they kept their monsters uh like animalistic yes and i enjoyed that a lot because then they felt like pets and companions where uh, Pokemon started making theirs more humanoid, which just kind of uh, felt a little off. Man, it's the sword oh. and shield starters. Let's not yeah. uh, <laughs> let's not bring up those nightmares. I hope they stick with the more um, animalistic, animalistic yeah. monsters. Feeling like they're um, animals out in the world. I agree with you there. Let's get into a big function of it that is really different from Pokemon in terms of, you know, the battles are you're just putting one of your Temtems against another Temtem they fight it out but in this case every battle you do is essentially a double battle you always throw out two temtem versus someone else's two temtem unless they only have one in which case you're going to end up clapping them <laughs> and at first i was i found the mechanic kind of weird it was like every single time you're fighting two different temtem even when you run into them in the wild 
But there, I, I started getting chances where I'd just get one wild Temtem. I'm assuming they had that for co-op play. Yeah, we uh, we only got to do co-op play for like a few minutes, but when we were able to get in, did we even get in a battle in co-op play? Uh, the servers were on such a strain that when we got into a battle, we ended up uh, just sitting there in a loading screen forever, and we just ended up leaving. Um, based on uh, based on our single player experience, um, I feel like the co-op battle play is going to be pretty good. Yes, so I did some reading. Uh, all, all the story and catching temtems and challenging dojo leaders instead of gym leaders in each city, you can do all with another player. And so rather nice. than throwing out two of your temtem in a fight, you throw out, you each throw out one. Um, and the reason I like this, I like MMOs where you fill a niche on a team and or like fulfill a purpose, like it matters how you play and what you play with. And what I was doing when I was reading uh, and also something they really hammer home in their dialogue is it matters what two Temtem fight together. Um, yes, yes. If you're playing a fire and a water type, uh, they're not going to succeed because Temtem, their most powerful abilities are what are essentially called, from what we've seen so far, are what are called synergy abilities, which means they gain a bonus if the Temtem next to them is of a certain typing or something like that. See, I didn't use that mechanic any. I did not know about that, but that makes sense. That makes sense a lot. Yeah, I, I talked with one character and saw that dialogue, and my crystal had a move that was like Crystal Dust Rain or something like that. Where it, And at first I didn't realize it. I keep seeing this like interaction where he would like absorb power from the Temtem next to it, and then it would deal more damage. Um, so I think it really matters who you coordinate playing with. It also makes a lot of the uh, abilities that get overlooked, especially like when we were younger, you know, you never took Screech or you never took Agility or anything like that that buffs your stats. You know, it was take the most brute force abilities. You only got four to work with. I learned that the hard way where there was one where um, the one Tim Tim was basically just a support character and was buffing the other one. Uh -huh. and the other one just one shotted me twice after all the buffs. Yep. And that's like, uh, I, I like that. I like having a, a, essentially a support Temtem matter. Um, another thing I like about the combat is all of the effects, like the poison and whatnot, ha and sleep, are not like randomly will, like, you, you don't essentially roll a die and see when you wake up or when you're not poisoned anymore. It all, they all have a timer. Mm -hmm. um, so if you got poisoned, you know you're only poisoned for three rounds and you can make an informed decision about how you want to play the rest of the battle based on that knowledge. And I like that a lot. Um, that was a good feature. I enjoyed that. Mm -hmm. uh, I'm trying to think if there's anything else. Uh, I, I think gra graphically, it looks great. For oh, an man. independent it one. It looks super good. It's super cute. All the Temtem are adorable. We saw many of the early stage ones, and they're all the, uh, cute in various ways. And uh, you could really end up building up a connection to them like you did in the old pokemon games speaking of which it was super cute but i think where they're trying to separate themselves from pokemon is the dialogue mm -hmm. it was uh there it was a little mature yeah there was definitely more mature dialogue i mean it wasn't anything crazy this is definitely still a game no, for yeah. kids or no they're like hell yeah oh yeah they're like hell yeah and i'm like i, I was still in pokemon brain and i was like oh my gosh <laughs> did this trainer just say this to me i think temtem cards I, I like the Pokeball capture mm. theory there. Very um, monetization esque in a good way, like in yeah. in the most in the best way, because they're your Tim Tim are in these little cards instead of balls, uh -huh. and that'll make it very easy for if they were to come out with like a card type game, uh -huh. it would be like holding your physical in game card out of game. Yes. And I can see me picking up a few of those in my favorite ones. Oh yeah. Like if I like if I end up having like a starter that I really love, I totally put like one of those Tem Tem guard cards on my desk or something. Another thing to note, uh, before we wrap up is character customization. I don't know about you, I felt like it was a little bit lacking. At least in terms of I don't options. Know if they were um if they're going to add more customization mm -hmm. when the game comes out. I feel like it, it was lacking. It was lacking for what I've saw how they hyped up the character customization. That's the one thing in like an MMO or a multiplayer S game, especially when you have the option to customize your character. 
people want a lot of options to be able to get to that nitty gritty. Yeah. And uh, it's not like looking for like glasses and hats or anything, but just like a little more hairstyles, a little more clothing would have mm-hmm. been nice. Um, yes. And that, and it that, feels like the options were all very androgynous and the, the guys were kind of yeah. like the stereotypical guy haircuts and stuff were kind of lacking. It seemed like mm-hmm. there was only like three and the rest were just long haired dudes or something if you were making mm-hmm. a guy. Yeah. But that would be my one complaint about the customization. Yeah, I, I think their like hair options and their clothing options were a bit more limited. And I will say, I, I, I did note, there are no male only or female only clothing options or hair options. You can do all of them, no matter uh, what gender you pick. And you also pick your pronoun at the end of your character customization too, which yeah, is kind of cool. I that think cool. the inclusivity there and that almost consciousness is awesome. Um, one thing I will say that I didn't mind about the character customization is that it wasn't too in-depth. When I'm starting to decide the depth of my cheekbones is when I'm getting, (laughs) I get way too anxious about making my character because I'm like, I'm not an artist. I'm not a sculptor. So I'm not going to like go this in depth with making my character's face. I'm going to end up making them look like a nightmare. So I like the fact that it was, um, mm -hmm. oh, you can go, keep going, keep going. Uh, I just think the one thing I really loved was the fact that it was just like hair, chin structure, and then it was clothing and eyes yeah it was all very simple i think they need to give you a bit more in the way of options but the general what you could change about your character was good simple and easy to understand and the one thing they did let you do was um you could change your character in game too yes nothing was permanent which is also do that like any any (laughs) multiplayer game or any rpg do that all right so here's the big question that i have for you do we think it's got a chance of competing or overthrowing Pokemon? Overthrowing? I'm gonna say no, just based on the fact that Pokemon has like TV series, cards, games, mm-hmm. but these games are lacking now. And there's, there's been like, I feel like there's been like a downhill of the games, especially with this last one, how uh, Nintendo kind of caught yeah, the paywall people... train yep. and the DLC train. Yep. Uh, so I see where the games like there's one thing that people have been asking is to be able to play Pokemon with their friends and not just locally like online yeah but like player. even locally feels. yeah you're actually able to explore the regions that's what matters we can go in we can be in a party and I think there was one time when we were partied up and we were in the grass and it put us into the same instance of a wild Pokemon or a Tim appearing yep mm-hmm. uh, so that's cool Maybe you can help out a friend catch a Tim Tim that they've been looking for if you, you can. have that Tim Tim's counter. Mm-hmm. So, yeah, I the just. The multiplayer aspect is definitely what I saw this game for yeah. and I wanted. And so far, it's looking like it's going to fulfill on that. I 100% agree. I was I did some reading. You can 100% help your friends catch Tim Tim together, and that's awesome. I think, I, I agree with you. I don't think they're going to be able to overthrow Pokemon. I think Pokemon's just going to have the brand recognition and be i mean you love pokemon because it's all recognizable to you temtem though i think is setting up themselves really strongly to step in the ring and compete and i think if they continue to grow the game you know it's going to be an mmo so they're going to have expansions they're going to add more temtem you know i i i think they've got a really great space to grow in um, and they're set apart just enough while still keeping the best aspects. They're giving people the Pokemon MMO they've, that we've been looking for. What I would do if I was them, mm-hmm. so I wouldn't even worry about uh, like physical renditions of this, like cards and stuff at first. And I would put all the eggs in the game basket yep. and make this the best Pokemon MMO competitor like this is what everyone wanted or asked for just deliver all that now mm-hmm. and they'll have a str- solid strong following mm-hmm. i would agree with you there uh chad are you gonna buy this game when it comes out here oh my god yes 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 it's coming out tomorrow yep um uh, maybe today as this video has been uploaded yeah we'll see what i can um, edit it by <laughs> we'll see what happens <laughs> but 100 percent, I'm, I'm gonna get it Yep, I'm also getting it. You? Yeah, I'm definitely getting it. Early access, 100% still I'm getting it. All I know is I pl- we played the demo, and like I said, we were crashing a lot. They were doing a lot to try and stress the servers to be able to have the best possible launch. And after playing it, stepping away and coming back to my desk, I was like, dang, 
I'm going to play some more Time Town. Yeah. I'm picking up this game. I know Alex is picking up this game, and he hasn't even played it yet. And we were able to sell him on it. So you'll definitely be catching us playing some Time Town on stream. And if it ends up doing well, maybe we'll do some more Time Town Tem -tem stuff on uh, YouTube as well. But yeah, I'd say I'd say pick this up. Will it beat Pokemon? I don't know, but we'll see whether they can compete. And uh, if any of you listening want to see us play, not just Tim Tim, but other games, we stream every Monday, Wednesday, Friday, and Saturday. Uh, it seems as though Monday and Friday are hard block for Minecraft on Monday, Star Wars Battlefront on Friday. Mm -hmm. Wednesday and Saturdays are up for grabs. Maybe we'll throw Tim Tim in there. Mm -hmm. And um, yeah, we have a YouTube channel. It'll be here. You'll see it here. Uh, upload every Tuesday, I believe. Yeah. Yep. Up around every Tuesday, we upload around, nerd around. culture stuff from gameplay to tier lists to stuff like this. Or feeling it out, what we like to post. So. Sounds good. Thank you for watching.